Hello and welcome to the strength workout focusing on the back, biceps and the abs. My name is Nern and with me we have Ritwik and Rani who are going to be working out with you today. In today's session we will require dumbbells to keep them handy yeah? and for our newer athletes you are going to be following Ritwik on my left who is going to take you to a scaled down version of all the movements today. And for all our regulars who are feeling confident to push us have a great technique you're going to be following Rani on my right. He's going to be taking through the scaled up version of all the movements. On that note, keep a bottle of water and towel close by and let's begin with our warm up. Are we good to go? Yeah. So for the warm up, we're going to be doing one minute each movement and three movements. The first one is a spot jog, nice and simple on the spot where you're just going to jog right there. Make sure to swing your hands as you do this and remember to lean forward a little. Don't stay upright, just lean forward a little and there. For our newer athletes, your option is to just do an on-spot march when you feel like you want to slow it down a little. Yeah? Let's get ready. Yeah? Let's start this in 3, 2 and 1. Let's go. Nice and easy, just swing the hands also and remember to lean forward a little. Don't try to stay upright while you do your sport jog, this is not natural. You have to lean forward because when we run, we always lean forward a little. So you've got to practice that even when you're just warming up. Nice and easy, just swing the hands. I want you to get your fingers up towards your chin. Yeah? So you get that running action as well. Keep the elbows bent throughout. It's a minute long. If you're feeling very comfortable at this point, please pick up the pace. Please pick up the pace. Remember the option for the scale down, you can start to march whenever you need to, like Ritwik is showing us right now, just move into the march whenever needed, yeah? Let's move a little faster for the last few seconds. Let's move a little faster. And that's done. Excellent. The next one is going to be the prone arm walk out. For that, we're going to start off in the high plank position. Yeah. From here, what we will be doing is now for scaled up athletes make sure palms are directly below yeah you're on your toes for scaled up you're going to slowly walk forward just take a couple of steps only don't try to go too low and then walk back to the high plank position yeah and we're going to pause with the palms are directly below the shoulder keep that hips below shoulder level throughout yeah as you move forward make sure you're not lifting your hips up you got to keep the hips low scale down athletes you're going to do the same on your knees just take Two steps forward and two steps back to the knee plank. Let's get a position and start this in three, two and one. Let's go. Just two steps out and come back two steps in each hand. Yeah, Two steps each hand. Let's start nice and simple. Always remember it's very important that you slowly start to challenge yourself. You want to ease into the movements. You don't want to challenge yourself too early when you're not fully warmed up and this being the warm up, I need you all to focus on slowly making it harder. Yeah. So that just basically means I want you to keep it easy at the beginning where you know you're able to maintain good technique. Back is straight, hips are dropping down, both versions. Scale down or the scaled up. Make sure your hips are coming low as you step forward. Keep that core nice and strong which means you pull your belly button in just a little bit. To keep the core active and press your palms into the floor so you start to work the muscles around your rib cage because that's what's doing the work when your hand goes forward that's the muscle helping you hold on and that's done from there we'll move to the alternating world's greatest stretch where we start in the high plank position again from there take a nice big step forward whichever leg is forward the same hand just drop the elbow down as much as you can then you lift that hand up, keep the hips low, lift the hand up, rotate and then we switch side. We go the other side, drop down as much as you can, lift your hand up with the hips down and then we keep switching. That's going to be the same for scaled up and scaled down. Let's start this in 3, 2 and 1. Let's go. For the scaled down athletes, if you're new to this movement, let it be a scaled up athlete or a scaled down athlete. If you're new to a particular movement, always just 
Make sure that you take that nice and easy. For a movement like this, just step forward wherever you know that you're able to keep your feet flat. Yeah, very comfortable. Drop the elbow down as much as you can. Lift the hand up. While you lift your hand up, just make sure your hips are low. Don't lift your hips up. It's okay if you're not as of now able to get your hand up all the way where you're able to look up. It's okay if it's just halfway to start, yeah? Just make sure you keep doing that more often so you get comfortable and start to increase the range of motion. Well done. As you do this, to challenge yourself, what you can do, what you can do is try and keep your back leg straight, yeah? That's going to deepen the stretch and the hip flexor as well. That's going to help open up the hip muscle there while you try to keep the back leg straight. And that's done. For the first set of exercises, we're going to be focusing on the muscles of the back. So first one, we'll have three movements for five rounds where we do 40 seconds work, 20 seconds of a breather. These movements are not meant to throw your heart rate up. They're really meant to focus on muscular strength. Yeah? So first movement is the alternating bent over rows. It's the same for scaled up and scaled down. Just the weight will be the difference. Keep your feet hip width apart. From there, keep the knees soft. I want you all to focus on driving your hips back. Soft knees, okay? Don't go into a squat. Soft knees, allow the upper body to drop with your back straight. No slouching, no doing that. Shoulders pulled back. From there, one hand comes up, goes down. Then the other hand comes up and goes down. When I say up, get your palm to mid rib and then bring it back out in the bring it back down on the outside. Then you get the other side where you're lifting the elbows nice and high and drop back down. Make sure to keep your back straight and knees are just soft. Yep. That's going to be movement number one where we are focusing on the lats as we do that pull. That's where it needs to be, not here. We're going to bring it to mid rib. That's your first movement. Second one is going to be the Superman hold where we do 20 seconds on each side. So for the Superman hold, you're going to lie on your stomach, keep your hands forward. Now you're going to lift your right hand and left leg and just hold that position. For the newer athletes, you can just drop every few seconds if you feel there's too much pressure on the lower back. Just try to hold it there for as long as you can, drop down and lift back up. For the regulars, just hold it there for 20 seconds. In the next 20 seconds, the other side, left hand, right leg and just hold that pose where you're going to be squeezing all the muscle of the back and then cross section. Yeah, we are not doing the same side, we're doing from the shoulders, the glutes on the opposite side. The last one is going to be the reverse flies. The reverse flies for the regulars, I would strongly recommend you'll take a very light weight. And for our newer athletes, we're going to do it without the weight. Yeah, here's how the movement goes. I'm going to show you without the weight itself. So once again, the same start position as your bent over rows. So you're going to be keeping the knees soft, drive your hips back, get the hands down, very lightweight or no weight for our newer athletes. Bring the hand up, squeeze the shoulder blades in the back. Yeah, keep the neck in neutral position and come back down. Squeeze the shoulder blades in the back and back. So we're focusing on the rhomboid muscles, which is the shoulder blades, which is the muscles in between the shoulder blades. Yeah, every time you come up, we want you to pause there for a second before you drop down. Yeah, come up nice and controlled, go back down nice and controlled. Ready? Yeah, you'll see both our athletes are choosing a lighter weight when it comes to that particular movement because it's a small muscle. Yeah, and you'll see it real quick sometimes just to show you'll not even use any weights. Yeah, let's get ready with those bent over rows, alternating hand. Starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. Knees are soft. Drive the hips back. Let's begin. Hands on the outside. Yeah, so you don't knock your knees off when you come down. So the whole idea of keeping the hands on the outside is so when you come down, especially as you fatigue, you don't hit that dumbbell on your knees, yeah? Remember to keep the knees just soft. Don't keep the weight on your heel. Keep the weight on midfoot, yeah? You want to distribute the weight evenly on your foot. You don't want the weight to be only on your heel or only on the front of your foot. Keep that midfoot so it evenly distributes. Hips are pushed back. Back is straight. Bring your hand up to mid rib. Drop back down straight, but don't drop your shoulder blades. And that's done. Dumbbell the side and let's get ready for the Superman hold. We have a 20 second breather before we start. Remember what I said, this workout is not something that's going to push your heart rate. Yeah, It's really focusing on muscular strength. Uh, so we have those little breathers in between each movement. 
Let's get the hands straight ahead and start in three, two, and one. Any one hand and opposite leg. So you can just keep dropping up and down like how Ritwik is showing us for a scale down option. Yeah, you can just lift your leg and hand and then drop it down. Just go, but make sure you're not using momentum to throw yourself up here. Yeah? When our regular athletes, just stay with Rani there. Just lift your leg and hand up as high as you can and hold. Let's switch side now. Let's go the other side. Just hold that pose. Well done there guys, well done. While you're coming up for the scale down athletes, don't use the opposite hand to press down, okay? The opposite hand is just straight. Don't use it as an assist. Few more seconds and that's done. From there, 20 second breather and we move to the reverse flies. Remember the focus for the reverse flies? It's for squeezing the shoulder blades in the back, yeah? Elbows are soft. Squeeze the shoulder blades in the back and pause there for one second before you drop back down. Ready? Let's choose that lighter weight for our scaled up athletes. Scaled down athletes, strongly recommend no weight on the first round. Starting in three, two and one. Keep the elbows soft, yeah? Don't bend the elbow too much. Just the elbow soft, pause on top for a second. Pause and then you drop down nice and slow, yeah? Remember, pause and then drop down. Focus on squeezing the shoulder blades when you come up. That's the same even for the scale down. Without the weights, you're still gonna feel that when you come up and you just hold it there. If you wanna make it more challenging, do it for a longer time. Hold it for three seconds instead of one, yeah? Hold it for three seconds instead of one. But make sure you're not pushing the head down and hurting the neck. Elbows soft for the ones with the weights, yeah? And without also, both with elbows soft. Just watch what's happening here. And that's done. Excellent work, guys. Round one done, how are you guys feeling? Yeah, back is feeling stronger. Yeah, excellent. Guys, okay, so in the next round, we're gonna maintain that same technique. Yeah, I'm not gonna give you all a little bit of a tip that I'm gonna give you on round number three. I'm gonna save that for round three. Round two, just focus once again on that alternating bent over rows where you're maintaining that straight back, shoulders pulled back throughout. Let's pick up those dumbbells and let's start round number two in three, two, and one. Let's go. Excellent work, excellent work. Come up nice and easy. Bring your hand up to mid-rib and back down. Keep that back straight. The common tendency is to push your hip forward. I want you to push your hip out a little bit more with it and lift the chest up. Yep, there we go. That's a little thing for you to keep in mind when you're doing your bent over rows. Constantly keep pushing the hip back. Let the knee come forward so it keeps that midfoot focused in terms of weight distribution. Make sure you're not keeping all the weight on the heel. Yeah, I repeat myself over there. Maintain that spine position throughout. Got a few more seconds here. And that's done, excellent. Dumbbell this side, and let's get ready for our Superman holds, 20 seconds each side. Now in the next round, when we go to our alternating bent over rows, when you feel too much strain in the lower back, I want you to just stand up and drop back down. Tell you all more when we get there. Now, hands forward, and let's start in three, two, and one, let's go. Opposite hand and leg, yeah, don't do the same side. Remember, scale down athletes. You can stick to what Ritwik's doing for now. Just one rep at a time, lift up and drop down instead of the fold. What the scaled up athletes are doing, what Rani is showing us right now. Keep your hand and leg straight. Focus on the glutes doing the work. Let's switch now. Switch side, let's start. Brilliant. When you're doing this, make sure you're squeezing your glutes to lift the leg up. So that's that hip extension that you're working on. And when you're lifting your hand up, try and focus on your shoulder blades being pulled back. So you're pulling your shoulder blades back down and that's done. 20 second breather. Reverse flies. We're gonna go without the weights again for our scaled down athletes and that light weight for our scaled up athletes. Just a light bend on the elbows. Remember the pause, please remember the pause, okay? Three seconds for our scaled down if you wanna make it more challenging. Yeah? Ready? Yeah? In three, two, and one. Let's go, drive the hips back, drop the upper body down. And here's what you should be focusing on, especially our scaled up athletes. Try and get your spine parallel to the floor, yeah? That means you drop your upper body down lower, which means it's gonna get harder because there's more focus on those muscles of the upper back 
Yeah. So when you lift the hand up, it's directly hitting those muscles because you're going directly against gravity there. Scale down athletes, remember you can hold that finished position, that end position a little longer to make it more challenging. But either way, scaled up or scaled down, focus on pulling your shoulder blades back. And that's done guys, brilliant. Two rounds done, now alternating bent over rows. If you're feeling too much strain on the lower back while you're doing the rows, stand up for one second, go back down and continue the rows. Okay, just make sure you ease off on the lower back. Let's start that in three, two and one. Let's go. For the athletes out there feeling very comfortable with that weight, but if you feel you have a heavier weight, go ahead if, if you know you have, not feel. If you know you have a heavier weight, grab those heavier dumbbells and go for it. While if you don't, if you don't, Rani's quickly showing us there. Let's train on the lower back. That's not something I want you to hold on to, okay? Let's train, stand up, release, and go back down. Hold it on top for a little longer if you want to make it more challenging. Yeah, just hold the dumbbell there for one second or two or three. Make it more challenging if you don't have a heavier weight and you want to make it more challenging. And that's done. Dumbbell the side. Dumbbell the side. We go to the Superman hold. The Superman holds will help us get that lower back stronger. We can hold on to those alternating bent over rows for longer as well. You guys good so far? Yeah. All right. Let's get ready and start this in three, two, and one. Now. I scaled the down athletes. I want you to hold it up for five seconds before you drop again. Yeah, five, four, three, two, and one. Drop and go in for your next rep. So that way you start getting familiar with the hold, but you're not going too long to start. Yeah. Let's switch side now. Let's begin. As remember. Our scaled up athletes who are holding this pose, please remember to breathe. Don't hold your breath. Just because you're holding a pose, don't hold your breath. Yeah? Make sure you keep that breathing in check. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. And that's done. Let's get ready for the reverse flies of round number three. This time, the scaled down athletes, if you're feeling comfortable, only if. Yeah, there's a big if over there. Yeah? Take a very, very, very light dumbbell just to add a challenge. Remember, it's a very small muscle we were focusing on, so please don't try to grab a heavy weight irrespective of you doing scaled up or scaled down, yeah? You good, Rani? Back is good? Yeah. yeah. that stiffness. Yeah. Start in three, two, and one. Once again, same over here. If you're feeling too much strain in the lower back holding that pose, just stand up, relax for a second, and go back down. But please don't stay there in wrong posture because that's going to end up hurting the lower back. Pause on top for a second, pause, and then you drop down. Pause, and drop, good. Feel those muscles working, excellent work there guys, brilliant, good. Stand up, shake it off, and go back down, that's it. Well done guys, just breathe out every time you lift the hand up. Breathe out every time you lift the hand up, and that's done. Great work. While you have a quick sip of water, let me show you all the next two movements. Focusing on the biceps, yeah? So now here's what we have. We have three rounds, 30 seconds of work, 15 seconds breather this time. The two movements are gonna be a dumbbell, double arm hammer curls, and the waiter's hold. So for the double arm hammer curl, so your palms are gonna be facing each other, just outside the time. Make sure you pull your shoulder blades back, stand up right, yeah? Please don't be here. I want you to be here. Elbows remain in line with the body while you lift the hand up without moving the elbow forward. Please don't do that. Yeah, that's a cheat. Yeah, that's when you want to cheat. You'll bring it forward so you get a little bit of relaxing time. Don't do that. Just there, elbows stay in line with the body, drop down, go back up and drop down straight. That's it. Same for scaled up and scaled down. Just the weight will be much lighter for the scale down at least. Remember, chest up. The next movement is going to be a waiter's hold. For this, keep your feet hip width apart. Keep your knees soft. Don't try to stay upright. Keep your knees soft. Keep the core active. And now, here's the waiter's hold. You're just going to keep your elbows in 90 degrees in line with the body. Don't take it back. 
Keep the elbow in line with the body, elbows 90 degrees and just stay over here, yeah? We're just gonna hold this pose for 30 seconds, yeah? That's all we're gonna be doing. Two movements, 30 seconds each with a 15 second breather, starting off with a dumbbell, double arm hammer curls. Good to go? Yeah? Get those biceps working, yeah? We call them the mirror muscles, it looks good when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, yeah? Let's get ready and start this in three, two and one, let's go. Remember to keep the elbows in line with the body. Don't bring it forward and don't take it back either. Yeah? The dumbbell does not need to touch your shoulder. Yeah? It does not need to. Just bend the elbow as much as you can without bringing the elbow forward. Please remember, without bringing the elbow forward. Back straight, shoulders back. Keep the shoulders pulled back. I want both of you to keep the shoulders pulled back and everyone out there, make sure you're keeping the shoulders pulled back. Please don't drop it. And that's done, keep the dumbbells down. That 15 second breather, don't hold the dumbbell. Keep it down, yeah? Very, very important. Relax, relax, relax. For our scaled down athletes, for the waiter's hold, you might want to choose something lighter or even not hold anything. Just kind of tense the muscle and stay. Starting in three, two, and one. Why don't you choose a lighter weight just to get them started. And let's begin. Remember, just a 90 degree bend on the elbow. Keep the wrist in neutral position, yeah? Don't drop the wrist down there. That's gonna end up hurting the wrist. Wrist needs to be in neutral, yeah? You can see both of them maintaining that position. Knees are soft, so that way you can take the load into your core also. Don't lean back, yeah? As you get tired, don't lean back over there. Just there, hips are slightly pushed back, and just stay over here. Great work. And that's done, slowly get the hand down. Relax. When you get those 15 seconds breather, quickly keep the dumbbell down, okay? Because those 15 seconds are gonna fly by and there's what you should be doing, yeah? A little bit of a stretch, shake the hands off, relax those biceps because this one's focusing only on the biceps and biceps are the small muscles. Let's start round number two in three, two and one. Let's go. Excellent, excellent. Remember, elbows. Elbow position is extremely important. Don't wanna see or take the elbows back. Make sure you keep that in line with the body. Just focusing on those biceps and you're gonna feel that on your forearms as well on the top part, yeah? As you come up, that's what the hammer curl does. A few more seconds. Shoulders back, shoulders back, shoulders back. Make sure you're keeping that in check. And that's done, double down. Don't hold it for a second longer also. You need that break, you need that break. So shake the arms off. Take the arms up, the waiter's hold is gonna be painful. After the hammer curls, when you gotta hold and maintain that tension, it's no joke, yeah, it's no joke. So just make sure you push yourself as much as you can, yeah? Starting in three, two, and one, let's go. Yep. For the ones who are doing without the weight, guys, remember you can just squeeze your muscle, it's as if you're flexing, yeah? Just hold that flex for 30 seconds, that itself is extremely hard, yeah? That itself is extremely hard. So just with the dumbbell, so scaled up, we're going to be doing the flex with the dumbbell. Scale down, she's very new to this, without the dumbbell, just flex the muscle and just stay there. That is hard by itself. Take my word when I say that. Done, 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 done. We got one last round. One last round. Are we good? Yeah, biceps are there. Yeah. And in case your biceps are kind of filling up the shirt right now, don't worry about it, yeah? Just, that's a good thing happening there, yeah? Round number three, your last round. Let's finish that. Starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. Double arm hammer curls. Shoulders pulled back. Great work. Keep the knees soft. So what happens when you start to fatigue? You will want to kind of bounce with your leg. Yeah, you'll want to do it, but you're not supposed to do it. Okay? Remember, you're not supposed to do it. Just walk the arms only. Fill those shots up. Excellent work. We got a few more seconds there. Keep that moving. And that's done. Dumbbells down. 15 second breather. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Do whatever you got to kind of relax the hand. This last 30 seconds, I want you to really challenge yourself. Okay, try not to drop. By this time, lactic acid is set in. You probably want to relax the hand when you need to, but try not to, okay? Starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. That's brilliant, guys. Keep the shoulders back. Very well done, good position there. Keeping the knees nice and soft. They want you to keep your knees slightly soft. Yeah, legs slightly wider. Yep, there we go. Excellent work, guys. Keep the chest up, head up. Core nice and strong. 
I'm not sure if smiling is going to help like I said in the previous round. But probably you could try it, yeah? Just to distract yourself, just keep thinking of something, just hold on to that last few seconds and we are done, guys. Very well done. Dumbbell this side. Now, dumbbell this side. We are done with the dumbbell work. So let's just keep those dumbbells aside and let's move to the core. Feeling good? Yeah? Yeah? Feeling the burn? Yeah? Excellent. Guys, now the last bit is going to be the core bit where we will be doing four rounds, two movements, 30 seconds work, 15 seconds breather again. Now, movement number one is going to be plank knee to elbow and movement number two is going to be the bicycle crunches. So here's how we do it. For the scaled up athletes, palms directly below shoulder, straight line shoulder to, shoulder to heel, so you do the high plank. From there, knee comes to elbow and you go back. On the other side, knee to elbow and back. Make sure while you're doing this, you're not lifting your hips up or down. Maintain the hips in a straight line. Keep the upper body in place. Don't move the upper body forward and back. You want to maintain this position. Bring your knee forward and you go back. Yep. For the scaled down athletes, you're going to be doing the same on your knees. So just drop the knees down. From there, just bring the knee up halfway and go back down. Then you go to the other side, bring it in halfway and back. You don't need to bring it all the way to your elbow. Just halfway and back just to start to work those obliques and start to understand the movement. Movement number two, your bicycle crunches. For our regulars, lower back press down. Leg off the floor throughout. One leg is straight, other leg is bent. Elbow to knee on the opposite side and you keep switching. Don't strain the neck, don't drop it down. Look up and rotate the upper body yeah, where you lift the shoulder blades up. Yep. For our scale down athletes, you're gonna keep the heel down, lift your shoulder blades off the floor and just knee to elbow, drop down, knee to elbow, drop back down. That's gonna be your option. Yeah. So let's get ready with this. We're gonna be starting off with plank, knee to elbow, 30 seconds. Good to go? Yeah. yeah. Starting in three, two and one. Let's move. Nice and controlled guys. The focus of you is to keep it nice and controlled. Yeah, you want to keep that back straight throughout. Bring the knee on the outside. Bring your knee on the outside. It's going to really start to feel that oblique starting to work. With the combination of the bicep curls, the obliques are going to be burning by the end of the fourth round. Well done. Back straight, hip slightly below shoulder. Got a few more seconds here. And that's done, guys. 15 second breather. That breather, I'm gonna strongly recommend that you lie on your back. Yeah, get ready for the bicep curls. Also, at the same time, just relax the abs. Keep your legs straight, lengthen the abs. Just relax for those few seconds when you can. Yeah. Let's start this in three, two, and one. Go. So, when you lift your leg up also. Yes, that's it, and switch side. Yeah, 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 that's it. That's the start. And I don't want you keeping your hand behind the head because I don't want you to pull your head in. Keep your hand behind the ears, because if you pull your ears, it's going to pain. So you won't do that, yeah? That's a great way to keep it in check. Shoulders off the floor. Lift the shoulders nice and high as you rotate. Now focus on lifting the shoulders as you rotate and breathe out every time you add that rotation. And that's done. Well done. Well done. A little bit of a breather, a little bit of a breather. Yeah. A 15 second breather, you can stay in that sphinx pose to relax the abs and then come into your high plank when you're ready. Uh, let's start round number two in three, two and one. Knee to elbow on the outside, try and bring your knee on the outside. Yeah. Don't bring it straight in, bring your knee from the outside to the elbow. Great work guys, excellent work, just keep that moving. Just hold on to just 30 seconds to try and push through the whole 30 seconds. Breathe, 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 and we are done. 15 second breather. How the abs feeling? Yeah, feeling that? Yeah, feeling the obliques? Excellent. Let's get ready for the bicycle crunches. Starting in three, two, and one. Let's move. Lift the shoulders nice and high. Yeah. And with that fatigue setting, when you feel that you're not really doing enough work with the upper body coming up, pause for a second. Yeah, even our scaled up athletes, drop your legs. Pause for a second and then go in for the next few reps again. 
but lift yourself up nice and high to make sure you're working the right muscles whenever you're doing those reps. Well done, well done, well done. A few more seconds, just pushing through. And that's done, guys. Woo! It's getting harder with each round, isn't it? <laughs> Great work, guys. Great work. This is not an easy one at all. Like I said, this is one of those deceptive ones where it looks very easy when you read it. But when you're doing it, it's a whole different challenge. Great work so far. Let's get ready for round number three. Starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. Even on this, when you need to just pause and drop your knees down, relax for a second or two, do that. That's okay, but just make sure you're not relaxing for too long because it's only 30 seconds. So if you feel that, hey, I'm losing form here, let me just pause. Do that, that's okay. Now if you just want to hold that plank, it's getting a little too much in terms of technique, just hold that plank, that's okay. A few more seconds there, and that's done. Woo! Ay, 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 now comes the challenging one. The bicycle crunches after those knee to elbow plank. That's a tough one, guys. That's a tough one. Great work so far. Excellent work to both of you. You guys are smashing it. Uh, let's start this in three, two, and one. Go. Remember to just pause when you need to, okay? Remember to just pause when you need to. Get that two second pause. Uh, just exhale, one powerful exhale, and then restart. But I want you to try and turn a little bit more on the upper body. Yeah, there we go. That makes it more challenging. I just made it more challenging for you all. Uh, great work, great work. Well done, Rithwik. Bring that up, nice, nice. Rotate a little bit more if you can. Awesome work. That is hard at this point in time, guys. Brilliant work by the both of you all. Excellent stuff. Keep that moving out there, guys. Well done. And that's done. Three rounds done. One last round to go. Just one last round, okay? Let's, let's make sure you push ourselves. Yeah. At this point, the best thing to say, let's just finish it. Yeah. Let's just finish it. We've come a long way. Let's not give up right now. Starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. And by doing that, I don't think anyone's going to complain if you get a good looking midsection. Are you? Yeah. So make sure you just challenge yourself because that's the perk of pushing yourself on this one. Oh, oh. here we go. Let's make decided to challenge all of you all by coming up on his toes. Yeah. Well done there, guys. Awesome work. Keep that moving. Ronnie's not giving you all any break over there. Yeah? Just keep moving. Awesome work, guys. Awesome work. The last few seconds. And we are done. Just one more movement and we finish. I'd like to say almost finished. Yeah. We keep that little secret. All right, we got 30 seconds more of core work. Bicycle crunches starting in three, two, and one. Let's go. Challenge yourself on this one, guys. Challenge yourself on this one. Here's what I recommend. Move fast for three, four reps. Move slow for two, three reps, yeah? Fast, slow, fast, slow. That pace, that change in tempo, yeah? We kind of distract you a little, just a little, yeah? And whenever you need to pause and just make sure you're getting the right technique, do that. Last few seconds. Rotate, rotate, rotate. You're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there. Let's finish this strong, guys. Let's finish this strong. We're almost there, right to the end. Right to the end. Come on, Ronnie, you got this. Awesome work, and we are done, guys. And we are done. Whew. Are we done with the workout though? I don't think so. Yeah. Guys, grab a quick sip of water because we have a finisher for you. Yeah, we have a finisher after all that burn that we just got. We thought we'd finish this off with a little bit of heart rate being pushed up. Yeah. So just one minute, we'll be doing foot fires where we go maximum pace of the legs. You can just swing the hands. Yeah. The pace can vary for you all depending on scaled up or scaled down. And then when I say drop, yeah, every few seconds, I'm going to say drop. You'll be doing a sprawl. For for the sprawl, a scaled up athletes. So here's what it, here's how it looks like. So I say drop, touch down, go on the plank, come back, and go back into your foot fires. For a scaled down athletes, you'll just be moving as fast as you can. When I say drop, step down, step up, and continue. Yeah. So you'll just be stepping up and down rather than jumping up and down. So what I'm going to recommend you is to get off the mat because we're going to be moving fast. So you don't want to be slipping with the mat. So for the guys out there, if you have a, a surface which has a good grip, I strongly recommend you use that. If not, please stick to the mat. But I'm having both Rani and Prithvi get off the mat here just to make sure they don't slip there. Uh, ready for this? Let's yeah. have some fun. Yeah. yeah. So but remember, when I say down, you're going to drop down quickly for a sprawl and come back up. Okay. Let's start the foot fires in three. 
two, and one, go. You just gotta go your maximum pace, okay? I'm gonna keep talking when I say down. That's when you go down. Aha! Confused you all, didn't I? Confused you all. That's exactly what I wanted to do. Down. Yep, 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 yep. I might move faster also, okay? Down. I might challenge you all to go faster. Sometimes I might even not say it for a while. So just keep moving your feet really fast. Drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go, there we go, there we go. Drop again. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Maximum pace, maximum pace. There we go, there we go. Drop. Awesome work. Remember, drop. When you go down, get a hip slightly below shoulder, yeah? Faster, faster, faster. Let's have some fun. Drop. We got a few more seconds. Let's have fun, yeah? Let's have fun. And drop. <laughs> I confuse them, I confuse them. That's the fun of it. That's the fun of it. Keep coming with us, keep coming with us. Drop. Almost there, guys. Almost there. And we are done. And we are done. Awesome work. That was brilliant. We had some fun to finish off. We had some fun to finish off over there. Guys, I want you to walk around a little because we finished off with the heart rate being pushed a little bit. Yeah. So you don't want to start the stretches straight away. Yeah. I want the heart rate to come down a few beats before we start the stretches. Just walk around a little. Have a small sip of water while I show you all your first stretch. Yeah. Remember, your focus while you're walking around and having a sip of water is to kind of get the heart rate down a little. So put your mind into the breathing yeah, and see where your breathing pattern is. Nice deep breath, inhale and exhale. Here's your first stretch. Your first stretch is going to be focusing on stretching out the abs. We're going to be doing the fingers pose. For that, we're going to come down on our stomach. Elbows directly below the shoulder. From there, lift the chest up as high as you can. Lift the chest up as high as you can. Keep the hips down and look forward. That's it. Yep. Let's get ready. Let's lie in the stomach. Take a deep breath before we start. Long inhale, long exhale, and let's begin. Keep the elbows directly below, elbows directly below the shoulder. Lift your chest up nice and high. Keep the hips down. Big focus on breathing, big focus on breathing. And with each stretch that we do, focus on that muscle that we're working. Make sure you lengthen it and now slowly relax. Now the next one's gonna be the child's pose, lat stretch. For that, we're gonna sit back in child's pose. From there, in general, we're gonna get the hands forward straight. Now for the lat stretch, we'll move both hands to any one side. Both hands will remain straight, no bending the elbow, okay? Keep pushing the hips back and keep walking your hands forward after that, okay? Make sure both hands are fully extended and the hand that's on the closer to center, that's the side you're gonna be feeling that lat stretch. Yep, let's get a position. Let's first start in child's pose. Hips back, hands all the way forward. Now walk both hands to any one side. Both elbows are straight and now from there continue walking your hands forward. Don't go to the side anymore. Walk forward, keep pushing your hips down. Feel that stretch on the lats. Feel that stretch on the lats of the hand that's closer to center. Keep pushing the hips back, guys. Keep pushing the hips back and keep trying to walk the hands forward every few seconds. Slowly come back to center. And let's go the other side now. Both hands straight, make sure your elbows are straight. Do not bend the elbow. Keep both hands straight. Walk forward from there as much as possible. Walk forward as much as possible. Keep pushing the hips back. Keep pushing your hips back. Deep breaths. Nice long inhale, long exhale, focus on relaxing as you do these stretches. Slowly come back to center and relax. The next one is going to be our downward dog. For that, we're going to start off in that high plank position. From your lift, your hips up as high as you can. Keep the knees soft to start. Focus on pushing the hips up 
and driving the heel down, yeah? Your first focus is to push the hips up and drive the heel down. Keep your knees soft to start. Keep your palms pressed into the floor. Let's begin. High plank position. Drive the hips up nice and high. Knees are soft. Keep the knees soft. Push your heel down as much as you can. Drive the heel down. Keep driving the heel down. Now from there, I want you to push your chest towards the floor. And as you keep driving the hips up, I want you to slowly extend the knee. Now just bring the hand back so you're not slipping. Get the hands closer to the leg. Few more seconds there, keep pushing the hips up. I want you to keep your back straight and chest down. Slowly come out of it. And relax. The next one's gonna be the supine knee hugs. So with that, we're gonna lie on our back. That's the supine position. Bend both the knees, as simple, just hug your legs and get your knees as close to your chest as possible and stay over there, yeah? Just stay, you could relax your head if you like, you can lift it up a little, that's perfectly fine, but don't strain it by pushing the neck in, yep. Let's go, get both knees close to the chest, hug your legs. Get your knees as close to your chest as possible. Deep breaths over there. Try and get your knees a little closer to your chest. Try to bring your knees a little closer to your chest. And relax. The last stretch is gonna be a reverse pigeon, which is focused on the glutes. For that, we're gonna line up back again. Now, this time, we're gonna cross one leg over the other. Now, whichever leg is down, that same hand will come on the outside or the opposite hand will come in between the legs and you hold the knee, yeah? I repeat, whichever leg is down, that same hand comes from the outside and the opposite hand comes in between the legs and you hold your knee and pull towards your chest. You're stretching the leg that is on top and crossed. That's the side, you're stretching the glutes, okay? Let's get to position. Whichever leg is down, that hand comes on the outside and the opposite hand comes in between the legs. Hold the knee and pull it towards your chest. You're gonna feel the stretch of whichever leg is up and crossed. That's the glutes you're gonna be feeling the stretch in. Change side now. Don't get confused, whichever leg is down, that, that hand comes from the outside, the opposite hand comes in between. Grab the knees, pull your knee towards your chest. Deep breaths. Always remember that while you do your stretches, every time you exhale, try and deepen the stretch. With this case, try and pull your legs closer to your chest. We are done. Just relax. We're done with our stretches. How are you guys feeling? Good? Yeah? Excellent work. Like I always ask, are you ready for another workout? Yeah? Excellent work there, guys. Brilliant effort, guys. Like I said in the beginning, look simple but challenging. Remember, each workout is going to be approached differently. And this one was focused on muscular strength. That's the reason we have those little breaks in between. While I say that, remember that all that recovery and repair happens when you sleep. So make sure you sleep well. Yeah, it's very important. Yes, we say that nutrition, the food, water is important, but that's only gonna work if you're resting well, get a good night's sleep, but that's when the recovery happens and all those nutrients and that water get that muscle repair happening. And that only means that you're gonna come back stronger the next day to push yourselves for better results. Now let's do our closing ritual where we say three, two, one, and we all together, including you, shout, we are cult. Ready? Yeah. In three, two, and one, we are cult. 
see you all in the next session. Thank you.